Oh yeah, I tell you something. Welcome to Luke and Lewis. We've got a very special guest episode here. Welcome back to the show, Joseph Green. Woo! Yeah. Let's go. Fresh out in Nepal. Thank you for having me. Good to be back. Welcome home. Uh, the comedian who most resembles Jesus. Is that true? I would say you're the one who's close. I don't think you resemble Jesus, but if I had to pick all of the comedians, you're probably the closest. Someone described you last night to me. We said, oh, we're going to see another one of our friend's shows, Joseph Green. And some guy went to my show. He was like, oh, is that the guy who opened for you last week? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, you mean like the hottest guy I've ever seen? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, God. What can I say to that? <laughs> I can't, I can't Thank say. you. I don't know. There's, there's, there's just like Thank you. Joseph Green, Jesus Christ. You know, that's even the same in of syllables. Yeah. And he has a personality. That's, yeah. Well, which Jesus uh, is is known for. There's a whole book about his personality. He does at least what book's that? for him. Uh the the Bible. I think it's uh, yeah. yeah. Bible. Yeah. So welcome no. to the show, mate. Thanks. Uh, Thanks you, for having me. You last time I saw you, <laughs> we were just jerking you off for about yeah. a minute. <laughs> How you're you hot, you're so hot. Oh, thanks for the intro, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, last time I saw you, before I saw your show, right, the time I saw you before that, you were just like, oh, by the way, I'm going to Nepal. Yes. And I was like, oh, why? And then you said, well, I've written a whole show for the for next year's comedy festival, but I think I'm just going to throw it away, go to Nepal and come back with a new one. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that seems like the world's most unnecessary holiday. But you do you, brother. <laughs> you went to Nepal. You came back. We saw your show. Wasn't that much stuff about Nepal in it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there was a little bit. And the stuff about Nepal that was there was good. But it really felt like you didn't get that hour that you were searching for in <laughs> Nepal. You had a great 15 about <laughs> Nepal. I'm not saying it's a bad show. It was a brilliant show. I felt sick afterwards from laughing. But in terms of like cost to benefit ratio of getting material from the poll, maybe it wasn't there, you know? You're probably spot on. I mean, oh, that's so funny. I mean, I did put a lot of pressure on the trip, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Come up with the comedy show, mm. heal a broken heart, yeah. become enlightened. There was a lot of things yeah. that yeah. I was trying to do. In How many do you reckon you ticked off? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> So, so those were your three goals. What did you achieve? Was there anything that you achieved that you were like, I wasn't expecting that? No, I mean, there's just a few things happened. Yeah. They were like, oh, this is hopefully funny. Mm. And then you just, at the end of the day, you just got to have a holiday. Yeah. But I, I, I think I, I didn't try to plan anything. Or yeah. I, I couldn't really. But before I went away, I wrote th this blurb. And it was funny how like... About your show. Yes. So you wrote a blurb about the hour that you were going to get <laughs> from Nepal before you even went to Nepal. <laughs> uh, man, so much pressure to put on your holiday. I know. It was man, too this, much. How long were you there? Six weeks. <laughs> it's going to be the funniest six weeks of all time. <laughs> You're in a fucking mountain. What did you think was going to happen? There's by like six my, people that live there. A lot of time has been by myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're by yourself and it's cold? <laughs> you know how fucked it was? Oh, sorry, you can, sorry, I'll tell that after. The blurb. No, yeah, the, the blurb, I, when I wrote it, I was like, isn't this so, so funny and silly? And I, I said, oh, I'm going to go, going away to the mountains, uh, hopefully I meet some Sherpas and some monks mm. and... Uh, Gee, I hope something funny happens. It would be funny if it didn't. Uh, and it kind of didn't. <laughs> and was it funny? But it kind of was funny, I think. <laughs> it was. I hope it show. sort of came together in, yeah. in a coherent way. But um, what were you going to say? Well, you invited me about a week before you left oh, to open right. for your trial that's show. That's right. And we, you had not told me this knowledge. You're like, yeah, yes. mate, trial show before the festival. I go, oh. Mm, eight weeks before the festival, pretty early for a trial show, but yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. So I came along, performs with some great people, and I get there and I go, How's the show looking? Like, you're feeling good about it? And you go, well, Man, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, and as Lewis said earlier, he goes, But I'm, uh, I've, I probably should have told you this. I'm not going to say any of this at the festival. <laughs> I go, What do you mean? And you go, Well, I'm going to Nepal and I want to meet a Sherpa that changes my life. <laughs> <laughs> what a gamble. 
I can't stress you enough the the idea, guys, that Joseph had a show, but you know, what and was then funny? threw it all out. The for show Nepal. was like the in that trailer show, the amount that it was crushing of you just telling the audience, like, oh, "No, I'll never say any of this again," because <laughs> guys, I'm 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 about to be on a plane to Nepal, and this mm. none of this matters. So you invited like ten people along to a show, and then we're just like, "So yeah, anyway." Sorry, you're here. What, what, what was that, I don't understand the point of the trial show. So after the show, <laughs> if, if someone was like, that was amazing, it was perfect, you go, well, that's unhelpful because I'm going to throw it away. Or if someone was like, man, that wasn't very good, you could do better, you'd be like, well, that doesn't help because I'm going to throw it away. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's what happened. <laughs> but there was so because many, I couldn't do anything with it. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to Nepal now. But there were so many great bits in the trial show. That I like didn't about do. your neighbour. Yeah. You didn't think to bring them back when you only had about 15 minutes Talking to the to you guys now, I'm going to bring it back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Keelan's mum's going to see it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, Keelan's mum's coming tonight. It's not like I'm doing it. It seems like yeah. very without context. It's like Keelan's don't, mum. Don't worry, man. No one thinks you're going to fuck Keelan's mum. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I think I'll bring back some of those bits. Now That's that good. You, you bring it up. That's good. Yeah. So how was your trip to Nepal? Even though it wasn't very funny, how was it outside of that? No, it was, it was a great trip. Because you went to Mount Everest. I did go to Mount Everest. The I did bottom. Go, yeah, yeah. I, I went to the, bottom the, of Mount Everest. the base camp of Mount Everest. Yeah, so you, look, you looked at Mount Everest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. Base camp's still a big hike to get there, right? Yeah, it takes, it takes a few weeks. Big flat hike. No, it's not a flat height, mate. You're like five and a half thousand meters up. It's misleading. I'm sure I can fucking reach it. Let's be honest. <laughs> but the word base camp is misleading because yeah. it implies that it's at the base of the mountain, but it's not. Well, it is at the base of the mountain. That's, the base that's is just that's the true. small slope in comparison to the rest of the mountain is so fucking but it, long. But the base of Mount Everest is very high compared to anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Mm. I guess is that's what's misleading about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And and you were just one of the like another white guy that these Sherpas have to like stop from dying. Yeah. Well, if if you go past that point, you you need to have Sherpas with you. Yeah. But I, I didn't go past that point. Mm. Um, and that's it's probably the most one of the most dangerous parts of Mount Everest is as soon as you go past that, there are like a lot of like glaciers and um, ice falls and. Even though it's sort of the beginning of the ascent, it's the most dangerous part of the, like the, the climb. Right. Um, but there's there's mainly there's a lot of Americans there who are pretty you know rambunctious and wanting to like get amongst it and yeah yeah. I don't know if I I think I've said this once in in the show, but there was I heard this uh, American dude talking to like some monks who were nearby and some Sherpas, and he was. All he was saying, I, I wasn't even, he was just behind and me. And do they, they speak good English? The Yeah, yeah they, yeah, they do. But this American guy was like, you know, um, Buddha was a, he was an athlete, yeah. He, <laughs> he was, he, Buddha was an athlete. Yeah, if yeah. you look at the statue, he was a powerlifter. <laughs> and, and he's been, <laughs> might have been a sumo wrestler. And, and then yeah. I, I didn't hear the Sherpas or this monk guy say anything. But he's like, but, do you know Keanu Reeves? <laughs> Are you familiar with Keanu? The Matrix? The Matrix? Uh John Wick, and and then the first thing I hear anything of these guys is just go, ah oh, yes, John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> so they 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 they've got a lot of like movies up there, yeah. including including John Wick. But but you can tell that because they didn't know what the Matrix was. They only recently got a yes, lot of movies yes. up there. Very good. They very didn't good. get the Matrix, but no, they've they got didn't. they've got. They weren't on board with the Matrix, but John Wick one and two, they they were all about it. I don't think they can superior with... films in my eyes as oh, well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. John Wick's really good. so good. I'm yeah. so excited for the next one. Yeah, it's brilliant. They're probably like one of my favorite movie series. It's, it's, I, it's so good. I me too. And I think it's like it's so good because it really shouldn't be. Like no. how many series of action films about a guy who kills people are, g are good? Like I, none. I have, it's so funny. It's just brilliant. A yeah. few of them. Like what? Die Hard. No, but like like critically <laughs> acclaimed good. You Is know? John Wick critically acclaimed? I, I think yeah. so. And it's got like really? now like yeah. a, a real big indie following or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty mainstream. Exactly. John Wick? Yeah, but he started off as kind of... India. Yeah. Just, this, the film was just a bunch of guys who do stunts going, oh, why don't we make a film full me, of cool me, shit? Meg and I have this in joke Meg. whenever we watch it, Meg, uh, that we that like we think John Wick was just written by like two frat dudes called Chad and Derek. <laughs> like, and they were just like in their dorm room and be like, oh, what about if he like kills more guys? And they're yeah. like, hang on. That's in a good. nightclub. 
and like, yeah. there's chicks and there's guns. <laughs> and, like it's just like it's and there's like a the really f- hot chick, and the best part is she doesn't speak. Yeah, and then like chicks are annoying. And, oh, <laughs> we need a motive. Like, what, so what's fucked up? You know, like when. You know, in I Am Legend, when his dog died, Will Smith should have just gone on like a fucking spree, like a killing yeah. spree. And that was just like, there's that plot. Let's run with that. Yeah. It's just written by like two guys with like a semi chub, just like <laughs> in their dorm room. Like, what about if Keanu Reeves killed everyone? Yeah. <laughs> and then the second one, they were like, okay, what about if they all tried to kill him? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Well, here's the thing. They can't. See, I didn't realize. This is why I didn't realize it was like critically acclaimed because in my brain it's like the same. It's the same amount of good. This is what I mean. Wise it as shouldn't Fast be and good. Furious. It shouldn't be as good. But as that's why I like Fast the Furious. Fast and Furious films is because it's dumb and yeah. you can turn your brain off and you can watch Ludacris just drift and but shoot guns. It's this, just, but it's here's just, the thing, Luke. You, this is the difference between John Wick and Fast and Furious. You and I both like John Wick. You and I both did not like Fast and Furious. And that's where you're wrong. I watched Fast and Furious 9. They go to space. It's the best thing I've ever seen. Yep. And and, and I have not seen it. Yeah. <laughs> they, drink, they drink Coronas at the end. Yeah. They pretend like that Paul Walker's still alive in the story. Do they? Yep. That's they just really ride funny. him out. They go, he's on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> they do. He's having a great time. He's in Nepal. <laughs> he's hoping to yeah. come back with a brand new film. It's not. It's not panning out. I thought of you the other day. Uh, Space Jam is now on Netflix. And remember the last time you were here, you went and saw Space Jam in the cinema? I did. second one? Still haven't seen it. But I thought of you. Oh, thank you, brother. You're welcome. Thank you. I don't know why I bought that. When you cried in the cinema? Space Jam (laughs) 2. No, I didn't didn't cry. I was just there with all these children. It was school holidays. It was first day it was coming out. (laughs) And I was was just there and by myself, but not by myself because, you know, it's filled with kids. Mm. And um, it was a good time. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We we'll, we're we'll walking here bef- before the show, Joseph and I. Yeah. And um, he's he's one of the greatest phrases I've ever heard. He goes, "You know what I realized? Um, most people know me better than I know myself." I was like, "What do you mean?" And he goes, "Well, like, whenever I told someone I was going to Nepal, no one was surprised." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "But I was shocked that I made that call." Yeah, were you? Well. I- because I got invited to go. How was it a shock? Whoa, oh, 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 I've booked flights. Oh, I'm, I've got tickets to the base camp. <laughs> Do you have to buy tickets? Or can you just rock up? Yeah, you, oh, you need you need a, a permit to walk in that part of oh. Nepal. Yeah. But um, I mean, I think I was surprised in the sense I got invited to go by a friend and I said no. Mm. And then I thought about it. I thought, oh, fuck, maybe I will. And so I did. And But I, without the friend? Yeah, without the friend. <laughs> I mean, no, I. I st- you didn't go with him. No, I still met him. I met him in Kathmandu, but we didn't do the trekking together. Oh, that's oh. so funny. You're like, I, you're like, oh, that sounds terrible. But when, when I think about it without <laughs> you, it sounds pretty good. But even like the way you make friends is so funny to me. Like when you told me, I was like, who's this guy who invited you to Nepal? And you're like, oh, I met him in India. And he's the guy who looks like you in the future, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, we, we met in America like 10 years ago. <laughs> and then we met in Tokyo a few years after that, and then India, and then now Nepal. Right. So every three or four years, we meet in a, n- a different part of the world. Both traveling wanderlust queens. A little bit like that, but he's way more like he's literally just on the journey, just mm. place to place. Where I'm, I'm coming back and connecting with the people, talking shit, and mm. trying to live a semi-normal life. Yeah, but. Uh, really failing at that. <laughs> yes. Like exactly. abysmally failing. My, Most my, semi-normal person I know is like studying to be a lawyer, doing comedy shows, <laughs> and then is in Nepal for six weeks. That's, that's true. That's, How did you do uni in Nepal? Dude, I struggled. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was another thing I didn't consider in this. No yeah. reception. This, this, on, whole, you're this whole thing. One of my uni lecturers emailed me saying, notice you haven't logged on for a few weeks. <laughs> And I was like, just racking my brain, like, what's a good excuse I can come up with? The truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, I'm actually at Mount Everest right now. My I'm, bad. I'm like, yeah, I'll just tell him the truth. And, and then she was like, oh, all right, well, hope you finish the semester and then you can get back to whatever you're doing. <laughs> you know, what's funny is, do you know that people who do uni don't go to Nepal for six weeks? <laughs> like they go, I'll do that on my holidays. 
Yeah. There are school holidays for that. I know. I should have done that. And, ex- <laughs> and, and uni holidays are quite long and extensive. Yeah. That, that, that's true as well. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, I'm, I'm doing like the, um, s- summer subjects. Yeah. Um, but, so I didn't have the, like the normal duration of holidays that I otherwise would have had. So you would have gone over summer. Yeah. So I, I actually finished, I finished my last exam and then mm. I, I left the next day. Yeah. And, and, but then because it's like a uni uh, summer subject, it's not very interesting, but the next semester started in 10 days. So four of those weeks I was in, in the Himalayas. You're the only guy who can go to the Himalayas <laughs> and then come back to Melbourne with like Sherpa's daughters as friends. <laughs> oh, this is true. That is true. Like, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's, you know, I go, how did you meet these, these people? And you go, oh, they're actually daughters of a Sherpa that I befriended. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, now, like that, it does and now and they live in Melbourne and now they're my friends. <laughs> You're just like a video game character doing side quests at this yeah. point. There is, there, like, you, 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 you were generated. Most of me. You were generated and they gave you a main quest and you're like, that sounds boring, ripped it up. <laughs> but you make me feel boring sometimes. You know what the main quest is? Finish your degree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to the ball. By the time I finish, it'll t- if I stay on track, which mm. is, that's very questionable. Big if. It will, uh, it will, be, it will still take me 18 years. To a f- from the beginning of it to the end of it. Yeah, Hang he's, on. he's been doing this since out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you know that? No. I a- thought you started this recently because you never talk about your law degree. No. Because you're always doing other shit. You started your law degree 18 years ago? <laughs> 17. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> I just wanted to be over. Bro. <laughs> You have to, how much fucking debt are you in? 18 years in uni? You're <laughs> fucked. I'd be going to the mountains too. <laughs> the liberals should have cut you off five years ago. I was also surprised. I'm like... But at what point is the, has the law changed since you started? <laughs> <laughs> like... He's just- going to show up to his first day at court and be like, guilty, we should execute him. Oh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> Oh my god! You're really dumb. I gotta check my notes. <laughs> the year's two thousand and five, <laughs> and you're like, I want to become a lawyer. I was in high school. I hadn't even. No, I was school. in primary school. I was nine. <laughs> I was in year five when you started your law degree. Oh my god, it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, for the, no, but okay, we're being harsh. You went. And you've done a lot of things since. You, you deferred quite heavily. Yeah, I've done other stuff in between. Yeah, have you done other courses in between? Degrees? No. No, no, no. no. I finished an arts degree. <laughs> well done. You're, you're going to be like the, the... I don't know if you're going to be like the smartest or the dumbest lawyer in the room by the time <laughs> you finish. You're like, I've been studying law for 18 years, actually. <laughs> Out of all the first year lawyers, you're going to have 18 years of experience behind you. Yeah, but four of those years were spent being an international model in New York, weren't they? No, I, I was in New York for a few of the years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, to answer what you, you said of like, is the law changing much? That's one of the reasons why it takes, has taken longer for me is I've had to redo so much of it. Because yeah. they're like, oh, this has changed a lot. You've got to redo this. Right. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, sure. Hey, you must be the only one in the class that you enrolled in Right, that's like still there. There's not like another bloke that oh, you from 2005. Yeah, there's, no, yeah. no, they're, they're, there's no, not. They're partners. Are literally partners at law firms. Yeah, now. they're so not funny. like you know rolling in, going like, oh Joey, mate, like we did orientation together. Like just him and his one study mate going, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't passed yet. Maybe we should stop studying together. We're holding each other back. <sighs> what what uni do you go to? <laughs> um, I so it's, it's changed <laughs> over time. I started at Melbourne University of Base Camp. <laughs> yeah, uh, I started at Melbourne Monash, and now I'm at. You D- got into Melbourne after high school, not doing straight law, do, doing straight arts. Yeah, right. And then I transferred to Monash to do arts. I law. sent them a photo of him yeah. as the cover letter. And, and come on, let me in. I'm good for business. And then well, I, I I resumed everything during the st- the, the lockdown in 2020. Yeah. And uh, Monash <laughs> were like, oh, we don't take people mid-year. 
And Deacon mm. were like, I will have you. So I was like, okay, let's let's do it. So yeah, now I'm at Deacon. Great. And, and is there a phone call where they go, so when did you start the degree and you have to say 2005? Yeah, well, there's a letter. Where you, and they're like, why do you want to do it now? I'm like, hey, I, I started a while ago. Yeah. Hoping you can let me back in. And they're like, okay, sure. This man is single-handedly funding all three universities (laughs) at the same time. I feel like you're going to apply for a job in law and in like another 17 years. Like you'll finish the degree, (laughs) defer again, and be like, I'm finally ready to become a barrister. (laughs) He's going to become an intern for the next 15 years. Oh, He'll start his three-month internship for 15 years. Are you just doing it to finish it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to finish it. And you don't you have to, to now. You can't put you don't 17 want to years law. into it. I, I, w- I listened He's to been practicing actually for 17 <laughs> years. He hasn't quite got the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to a podcast. It wasn't even a podcast. It was a, an interview, like a yeah. phone interview Jerry Seinfeld did in like 1984, like before he, Seinfeld, the show had even mm. started. And he's like, I listened to this at the start of the pandemic. And he's like, I really believe on finishing what you started. Mm. I think that's important. I'm like, I should do that. <laughs> I should do that. And uh, there, w- there wasn't anything else to do. So I was like, let's just finish this. You degree. don't believe in it that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jerry didn't say quickly. <laughs> yes. Say I mean, I'll, I'll be so happy when I finish it. If, if that's I'm, an achievement. If, if, I, if I finish it. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, I've got like a year, pretty much a year to go now. But I've had a year to go... I had a year to go 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be one of those lawyers that their opening statement would be like, this reminds me of that time when I was in Nepal. And then, and then 40 minutes later goes by. And then I met my friend in New York while modeling. And by the end of that monologue, the whole jury will be crying. And they go, innocent. And they, but you won't even have talked about the case at all. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I'll be a lawyer or not. I, I mean, the mm. dream was just to do, <clears throat> keep doing comedy. Yeah. And finish this degree, and it's it's such a cliche, isn't it? Though, as a, as a comedian, to do a law degree, it's so it's many like, comedians yes. study law. So so many. I think that a lot of comedians just like want to be in front of people and sound smart, and then the law degree is the perfect one for that, where everyone has to watch you, and that's, you're very smart. That's interesting. No, I think it's the opposite. <clears throat> I think it's they come out of high school and go, I think I want to, I am intelligent and I'm not good at maths and I like talking. And then they mm. start law. Then they go, oh, I don't like this that much. Comedy's more fun. Yeah. I think it's the, they definitely like probably intend. I, I know that's what Michael Schaefer did, fellow comedian of ours. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure he, did, he did finished the law degree and then he finished, yeah. like, ah, oh, comedy's more fun. For sure. Which is a great call because. I reckon I, can, I reckon I can pay off this uni debt with the salary of a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. It's like, <laughs> mm. it'll be emotional when I finish it, hey. Yeah, it's, it's a big like, big achievement. Literally like a, a child has become an adult in, 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 that, in that time. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I was in year five when you started and now, fuck, now I'm, t- I'm 27. But I've, I've had one, only one semester where I've actually been with other students. And, and they, they, think, they don't even think I'm that, that old. Yeah, because you, know, you don't seem old. Like that, no. that, 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 one of them last year, I was with a group of them, and they're like, "You seem a little bit older than us," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I am." And they're like, "What are you like? 21, 22? You don't look twenty. How old are they? But they're like seventeen, eighteen. So that yeah. like the way they're conceiving of it is like maybe he's just a mm. bit older than us. Yeah. And another one was like, "No, no, he's older than that. He's like twenty, maybe 23, 24. I'm like, "Yeah." All wrong, guys. I'm 25. <laughs> but they're, they're like, people will always, I've noticed, based on whatever their age is, they'll just guess yeah. what you're like, you're the same age or maybe yeah. a little bit A beyond, little bit older. Yeah, yeah. Than what they are. Yeah. I don't really think about age when I hang out with people <clears throat> anymore. Nah. Yeah, no, they're do really I. young. But, you know, a 17, 18 year old. Oh, would. absolutely. Yeah. But like, unless they're like, I think though but that older than me, I don't think about age. Younger, I probably do. Younger, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone's more than a few years younger than me, I'll definitely notice. Yes, but older, especially in comedy, I feel like once you hit twenty something and you're in comedy, it's kind of you just stay that way I forever, feel, whether you're fifty or thirty. Yeah, I don't feel like the young guy anymore on the lineup. Mm. Often, still am probably, 
but I don't a, feel a young person as in just, just young like when or I like started, when I was 19 I was always like the youngest person in the lineup pretty yeah. much every lineup I was ever on yeah always the youngest yes and now I'm like and when um, it was when it was Luke and I it was like oh man two young guys yeah <clears throat> but now uh, I'm not not at all mm. yeah, yeah there's a whole way a whole new generation since, yeah since we've started now there's a whole like group of like 18 19 year olds who like watched us for You're two or three dicing. years. Maybe under the table. I've got surgery coming up soon. Ha ha ha. Classic Joseph Green. He's a funny boy. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what else is fun? Mm? Not funny, but yep. fun. Yeah. Nobby underwear. Oh, yeah. The funnest undies in the game. Join the undie club today at nobby.com. .au. An Australian business that makes comfortable, sexy, beautiful underwear for men and for women. And they send it to you every month in a package. You can get $5 off that package for your package with code sound off. Use it now. Go use it now. Support the brands that support us in an aggressive nature. Go to nobby.com.au. Smash like this. I'm going to nobby.com.au. Aggressively and use code sound off. Pass me that used razor. Uh, thank Can you very much. Keep uh, it away from me. Manscaped.com. Use code sound off uh, for, for... No, manscaped.com slash sound off. 20% <laughs> off uh, and free shipping. The best uh, ball bag trimmer in the game... Oh, sorry. Don't, t- right. don't touch the lens. Uh, the best ball bag trimmer in the game uh, is the Lawnmower 4.0. Something yes. I use religiously. Really? Yeah, I only you use worship it in church. It. I only use it in church. Smart. While praying. Respectful. Yeah. Um manscape.com slash sound off 20% off free shipping best ball, ball bag trimmer in the game yes not a ball gag trimmer no that should be trimmed mm. but trim it so you can look do whatever you want after you trim your balls um manscape.com and uh lewis what else does it come with two for one shampoo yeah two, two and in one shampoo uh, you don't get two for one you got to buy one but sorry. you get two in one two in one shampoo but, and conditioner in uh, one bottle and saves time in the shower. I've always said there's nothing funny about that. No, absolutely nothing funny about that. And it's something that we all should use. And uh, a bunch of other men's grooming products as well. They're a great brand. Uh, get on it. Manscaped.com slash sound off. Use that custom link. And then you save. You're welcome. Now back to the pod. Back to those bloody boys. I wonder what we're talking about. Oh, what? yeah. Oh, it's, what's, what's the extent of the surgery? It's like full anesthetic. Yeah, going yes. under. The first one is less severe. The first one I go under for a day, I come out, they, they chop my skull in half and all that. The And then I get braces. The second one is ICU for three days. And what's the period in between those operations? 12 to 18 months. It depends how fast my yeah, teeth move. Yeah. Because they can't move my lower jaw until my upper teeth are ready or my mouth won't close. Yeah. Well, so first surgery and then braces to move all my teeth and then the big one. That actually makes a difference. So I get to have braces and be in pain for 12 to 18 months and it makes no change at all to oh, my wow. condition. Yes. That sucks. I'm getting a CPAP machine this week. It's exciting. It's going to be like Darth you Vader like when I go to bed. You're strapped up to tubes? Like, yep. like mm-hmm. it's a Bacta tank? It's like, it's like a vacuum that blows air down your throat. It's going to be deep throating air every night for, for 18 <laughs> months with braces. It's going to be sick. And a gap tooth. Have you had that experience before? <clears throat> no, no, never. Wow. No. I had a... Uh, I have like a little vibrator on my neck that alerts me when I'm on my back and wakes me up, makes me roll over. But now I've started suffocating on my side. So it's so, like so what they're doing worse. with the braces, you need that because of the braces. I, I know I need the CPAP machine because my, my sleeping has gotten so much worse recently. I've started falling asleep at like 6 or 7 p.m. like every night. Whoa. You fell asleep backstage at, at the comedy festival venue the other night. At your own show? Oh, yeah, before yeah. mine. Before yeah. yours. You just fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Just sitting. on the ground. Yeah. That's wild. It's getting really bad, yeah. Like, like at the part that like, I'm at now, doctors are like, hey, man, don't drive. I'm like, ah, oh, all good. <laughs> I can't, actually. Do, do you drive? No, no, because I my sleep apnea has nothing to do with me. It being, doesn't have anything to do with him being 28 and not having his license. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, I'm 28. I said I was 27 before. Forgot. I'm actually 28. Yeah, it's because he doesn't think anymore. Um, because the sleep apnea affects memory and cognitive function. Didn't you get told that you were like legally disabled? Yeah, it's a dis. It's like a. It's like is a that disability. true? Yeah, yeah. It's like a chronic illness. Yeah. I'm marked as severe. That's why he makes you have so the many jokes about disabled people because yeah. he can. Now. <laughs> I am one. I'm one. Yeah, of them. he's yeah. always doing that because he's yeah. one of them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I still don't have that free pass. When Ash, I do it, I'm just an arsehole. Can you guys talk slower? Huh? Just for my benefit, please. Yeah. Uh, one guy messaged me, th- I think thinking it was you. <clears throat> right. So this guy, this 
person's hit me up, mm. assuming knowing one of us is getting a jaw surgery. Yeah. Yes. People get us confused a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. Just says, I had the surgery last year and that's the gap I had after three months of expansion. I have three years of braces and then top jaw surgery. So this is after three months of after the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You could fit two. I'm not sure if we can put this in the video. <laughs> is that what you're, you're going to look like? That yeah, it's that's look like fantastic. That. With braces, though, because the thing oh. is, the expansion thing—they do the surgery, and I have a little gap, and then for three months it'll progressively for, get for wider audio and listeners wider and, and, wider. and video people. Imagine a you bloke. could fit two McDonald's straws. You could kick across. a football Did, through there, mate. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's goalpost at the front of his. It looks like the the truck mater from cars. It's so <laughs> fucked. But don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Yeah. It's fine because I'll also have a lisp. And braces. Oh, my God. And my condition won't improve. So we'll, there's a bright side to all of We were watching a video this morning of a guy who's <clears> got the surgery Lewis is going through and how he speaks and what he looks like. Yeah. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's too. It's so bad you, you can't listen to the guy. And so what happens- Hey, guys, welcome to Luke Lewis. So in the, sec, in the second operation, it just magically, everything changes. It's a cure. So the, the, the problem is my chin is too far back. So my tongue is too far back and that covers my throat when I'm asleep. So this, it's a very simple fix. Move the tongue. Oh, wow. His jaw is retreating constantly. With, a, with yeah. a, a, essentially a jaw reconstruction. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to look like you. I have, to, I, I have to, the guy goes, some people get this purely for cosmetic reasons because it gives you a really strong jawline and everything, <laughs> and it will fill out the top half of my face as well. I had to convince Frenchie the, and Tom the other night that you weren't getting it for cosmetic reasons. That's rude. They were <laughs> That's one, so very they rude They were 100% sure that you were just making this whole that's thing up. That's very disrespectful and duly noted, because that's what they think of my face, and I will be no. taking this up with them. No, no, no. That's what they think... Of you. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they think you... They think I'm so go, insecure. No, I think they just think that you often like to look good. Yeah. You know, you're doing... You, you wore a coat yep. on stage the other night. Yeah, I did. Did you see the coat? Yeah. It looked great. Yeah. Looked I voted great. for the coat in, yeah. the, in the poll. I, yeah. I, gave the, I, I voted, voted the for the turtleneck and chain. I like the turtleneck and chain. I think it got robbed. Yeah. 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 I was disappointed I the there did it justice. wasn't an option to just to to, to abstain. Uh, yeah, <laughs> be like vote t-shirt and jeans, please. Well, let's just not not rank our fits. No, no, no. This is very important, and it's part of it's part of who I am. If you're coming to see my show, <laughs> yes, you're going to see amazing comedy. Yes, yeah. you're going to see some brilliant crowd work, and that might be why you think you're there. Yep. But what you're really going to get out of this is a sick fit. You yep. know. That's what. That's why you know. Come for the jokes, stay for the fits. See, Joseph on stage is just so um, like you. It's so inconsistent. <laughs> like, like sometimes <laughs> you have been known to just obviously wear the casual jeans and t shirt combo, yeah. like me. Yeah. And then other I times, thought you were talking about his jokes. I was like, what a rude thing to say <laughs> no, no, on no, a no. show. Fit, fit. Like no. uh, anyway, moving on from outfits. How terrible is Joseph's no, comedy? No, no, the, the jokes are great. The jokes are always consistent. good. Consistently great. Loving it. Yeah. But then there's other times where I've been at gigs with you and you're mm. just wearing like hiking boots and a Kathmandu puffer. Yeah. <laughs> just like on stage. Yeah. Like you come back from the pole. Like there's looking been times like a where you're just- Yeah, where you'll like be looking like you're about to go on a hike and there's other times where you're like wearing the boots and- I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. And then- I don't know what to say. You were- been known in summer to, to rock the shorts as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind performing in shorts. I think that's a comedy sin. I, don't, you I think? couldn't tell you why. There's, there's a real In the heat big, of summer, when it's when it's Real hot, big movement against shorts on stage, and I'm firmly on in that Darwin, side. In Darwin, I did shorts and a singlet to piss him off. Disgusting. On the other side of the singlet. country, still making him mad. That's so, so you know what fucked. Though? Went and watched a really good bit of crab work yeah. that I did from that show. Yeah. Didn't post it. Told you. <laughs> Told you. You know why? Because of the aesthetics. I looked too buff. You looked, no, because you looked really <laughs> racist. You looked really racist. If you go up in shorts and a singlet in Darwin, that man's going to leave with boot polish on his face. You know? <laughs> like, that's a racist comic. No, it was just, it's just like, it was confusing. Yeah. It's strange. Out of context. Like, if you're just scrolling through TikTok and, and the bit's not about me, on the night I did acknowledge why yeah. I was dressed in a set of tire and we all moved on. Was any other show. comedian wearing that? It was my show, so I was the only. Comedian oh, you did it for there. an hour, dude. Just, I don't like that. I did it twice. I did it for two hours. Man, 
<laughs> but but it was too in that aesthetic is too inconsistent with everything else you're doing. It was more just like mm. I would have copped a lot of comments being like, "Why can I see your nipples?" Yeah, because I was wearing like one you, of my well gym. I was wearing my own merch, so my <laughs> well gym. One, you can like see the nipples. You're popping nipples. Yeah, out. I was popping nip on stage. It was like thirty six degrees. Yeah. I think the people enjoyed it at the time, mm. and I was dressed like everyone else in the crowd. Yeah, so they kind of were like, "What a relatable guy." Yeah, I also contemplated wearing thongs, but then went. Like shoes, I did go close close toed shoes. That's where I that's drew the good. line. That's good. I was considering thongs on stage. No, nah, you don't much. want you don't want barefoot out on there on the internet. It, it makes quite a difference, like what you're wearing, how how you feel, how the people perceive you, what True. you can. Di- different bits. I don't know yeah. if you guys feel this way. Mm. Different bits go differently based on what you're wearing. Yeah. Do you have that experience? Oh yeah. I I uh, I will literally plan out my outfits every night. That's like in advance. But do, so but on the day, and do you notice like a different receptivity? Yeah, for, for sure. But he can't even get to the venue on time. <laughs> yeah, like he, like it's so crazy where your priorities are. At. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you'll be like, oh, I forgot. Like you'll just forget something basic. Yeah, like oh, I don't know. And underwear. then, huh? Huh? What'd you say? I said underwear. <laughs> Joking. Well, sometimes you <laughs> or know. Am I? Yeah. And then, then he would just be like, yeah, but I know what jacket I'm going to wear next Tuesday. Yes. It's yeah. crazy. Do you remember that time we were at the comic strip in New York? Yes. And we did a gig there. Yes. And I didn't do very well, right? You did great. And I came off and was like, ugh, these Americans, they just don't get my comedy, right? Bad crowd. Mm. Joseph comes on after me and destroys. <laughs> like, Ooh, right? bad comedian. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> That's, uh, this is the worst feeling when you're like, those guys suck. And yeah. someone else who does... Who's quite like it you was like at well. six p.m. It was yeah. the crowd was full of comedians and I just mm. didn't get their attention. Yeah, but he got their attention as like this. You yeah, know, you ha- came on. You did a bit about watching Gangs of New York with your dad. Yeah, right. It destroyed. Yeah. Then I came off. Didn't have a great set. The owner of like the um club. What was it, Gladys? Yes. 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 I remember her name because she flamed me. Do you remember this? Did she? She came up there. I was running. I met Gladys. You did? Yeah. I did because I talked about you and she remembered you. <laughs> Yeah, she definitely didn't remember me because no. this is what she said after I came off. She goes, you were good. You can tell you have potential, but you look homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, what were you wearing? She's like, your jokes aren't homeless, but you are. So she's like, fix that. I was wearing that. Um, You didn't used to like the jacket either. I was, used to wear like kind of like a Chino colored jacket. I a hated lot. that jacket so much with all the pockets. Yeah, a mustardy colored thing. Kind yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It didn't have that many pockets. It just had two. Yeah, too many pockets. Just a regular pocket. Two big pocket. pockets. And, and that's what she was commenting on. Yeah, I was wearing jeans, like I guess a t-shirt underneath. That's so and, funny. Because there's pictures of me on that stage. Yeah. Like, just, you know, and just I uh, look homeless and I've, and I've never forgotten that. And I've never worn that jacket on stage since. What was, what was that venue? Um, the, the comic strip. Comic strip. Yeah, yes. comic strip. Yeah, she talked to me for a, like 20, 30 minutes after my set. And she's such a small, short woman that I was tiny. I was like on my hands and leaning on my hands and knees against the wall. And she grabbed the back of my head <laughs> and started hey, 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 like for like 20, 30 minutes about comedy. And then I mentioned that I knew Joseph and she had heaps to say about you. What? She's just giving me all of this advice and going, if, if you want to make it in New York, this is what you have to do. And I was like, oh, I just, I just want to do like five minutes just to, for fun yeah. up here. And now I'm getting... Yeah. But, yeah, but look, look at me now. I think Madison that's what Square she didn't like about week. me. I came there to just experience what it was like. Yeah. And I maybe didn't take it that seriously. Yeah. Like got up, didn't really think about what I was going to say. Chose the wrong bits. Mm. I got up, you know, when you're halfway through a bit and you realize like, hey, brother, you punchline about La Paqueta, a niche Melbourne <laughs> Italian chain. It's probably not going to hit that hard in New York. <laughs> like Pulling out La Paqueta bits in yeah, New York? Just like shit like that. Like I just chose the wrong material. I was like not going well. I'm looking at Joseph. Joseph's side of stage going, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And, you, know, you know, like it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't my day. Yeah. Right. Had a shocker. I don't think you did that bad. I didn't do that bad, but like I felt like I didn't do very well. He's really overstating how badly did he You might be catastrophizing because the woman called you homeless. I think so. But I agreed with her. Yeah. Because I like just probably hadn't shaved. We were like tired, sleep deprived. We were going out till 4 a.m. every night to watch comedy. Oh, yeah. Yes. By the end of my New York trip, I looked like shit too. Yeah. You know, because I could tell because at, at the start um, of the trip, Homeless guys would ask me for money, but by the end, they'd ask me if I needed anywhere to stay. (laughs) (laughs) Do you, um, (laughs) that's, uh, is that true? Yeah. (laughs) 
I love you really took your time to receive that bit. Yeah. <laughs> One guy was like... No, because I was like, I received it as a joke. And then I was like, I don't think he's kidding. I don't think I ever got over my jet lag. So, But New York is just open 24-7. So I just like slept we during the day. We just lived on Australian time. Yeah, yeah. You could, you, you can there. So during the day, like three times, I saw like daylight. Yeah, it's, we, a, it's a night city. I saw 4 p.m. Like, there were many days times. we'd wake up yeah. at four o'clock yeah. in yeah. the afternoon. Yeah, it's a night city anyway. Yeah. It's better. Um, do you still That's true. stay in contact with... I've never been to anyone richer. I've never been around anyone richer. The loveliest lady. She took us out for a nice dinner. Um, it Anya. Was, Anya? Was Anya. It? Anya? Yeah, Anya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She lives um, Money, Anya. in Manhattan next to the Queen Street Bridge. Yes. Oh, with wow. A, with like a penthouse view of the Empire State Building just across the road. Joseph, I didn't know you were an escort. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, she, then she did she threw this off to me which is crazy because i'd met her for three hours and the amount of times that i've just considered taking her up on the offer she's like if you ever need a place to stay in new york you're welcome to stay and i would never ever take her up on that right but it was a very lovely gesture and remember when she like took us to that comedy club rudolph rodney rude's one no that's his rodney Australian. dangerfield rodney, rodney dangerfield, dangerfield. Yeah. yeah right yeah. and then she took a picture of us outside Yes. And um, she paid for it. She was like, I want to pay for you to go in. Yes. Right? And she was Sugar like, mommy. Yes. She was so generous. And what did she do again? She she, she uh, makes a, sweaters. Uh, she they're called, like they're designer called onions. Yeah. handmade sweaters yeah. that sell for like. She makes them. Crazy. Amount. She designs them. Right. Yes. She used to yes. that. She started Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she started making right. them. And then she's one of those like yeah. came to New York with a dollar. Sick. And then like lives in a penthouse. Yeah. That's she's why she likes. You guys, because you like come Because we looked homeless. Yeah, and you're from well, a different I country. <laughs> and she probably doesn't have a husband and everyone gets lonely. No, no, she has a husband. She does. Oh, he's well, very, you know, every, everyone's relationship is different and who are we to judge? Yes. It was just <laughs> being with him in another country. How do they, like these random ties there? Like, Sorry, Joseph's, guys, Keelan has COVID. Joseph's the kind of guy like who can walk through mm. a subway station. Yeah. And people are like, Joseph. <laughs> and he's like, hey, like, it's so weird. Yeah, I remember talking to you. After you came back, and I was like, how was he? He goes, yeah, I met up Joseph. was fine. Dude, it's so weird. We're walking through the city, and the security guard goes, hey, Joseph. And then they talked for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I did live there for four years, so I knew a few people. Yeah. But uh, Anya, Anya, I mean, it's funny you bring her up because she's brought you up to me. <gasps> really? I, I've, okay. I've been back there since. Mm -hmm. And she's like, how Have are you? you? Yeah. When did you go back? I was there like... That was like three years ago. I know, but I was there within like the next six months, I think. Oh. And, but we, we, I mean, I keep in touch did with Did she put Anya. you on a first class flight? <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, I knew... She, she was like the... Mummy's got a sweater for you to wear. <laughs> <laughs> but no pants. Um, <laughs> she, she, asked, she was really asking about Luke and yeah. has kept checking in. It's funny, mm. we've only brought her up now. Oh, really? Yeah, she's like, oh, how is Luke? I still follow him. I don't think he follows me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. What's her name? I should. <laughs> I, and, and she's like... This is networking. Mm, this is good. <laughs> she's, she's like, calm. I thought we had something. I thought you wanted to come back and stay with me. Now I do not know. But then it, So she really was being serious about the offer. Dude, of course. Come stay back in Did this you ever stay with her? Why would an old lady... Make an offer for you to stay because at a couch. Because that's how women die. No, no, because she was being really nice. Yeah. No. I just thought, like, she took it. She paid for dinner. Like, it was a nice Man, dinner as well. We, I've met, a, like, a very small amount of people with crazy money. And they don't lie when they offer you something. She, They're she never stays, lying. She lives in the building that Donald Trump's son lives in. and wow. And down the bottom, there's just security cars, like, yeah. FBI, like vans and shit all around the building just waiting for an assassination yeah and then she's like would you like to stay here like that yeah. that's a crazy offer mm. and yeah. i i i just thought she was trying to be nice every single morning i mean she was trying to be nice but I, i'm yeah. sure it was genuine as and well that, and then we caught the subway back to our like hostel it, you know <laughs> if if you came if even if you went back there now and and visited her even if uh, any of you here let's went, go right now probably any listener to this podcast yeah. heard this and and then went to new york and said anya I know Luke and I know, Joseph. I know Luke and Joseph. I'm here from Australia. She would probably give you clothes. Like really good quality clothes. Yeah. Okay, if, if, I'm sold. I'm if, going. If, if it was like a mildly cold, coldish day, like mm. less than 20, and you didn't have a hat, she would give you a beanie or you yeah. had a t-shirt on. She'd be like, 
Here, my sweet, let mm. me put a okay. jumper on you. You're it's never finishing new. this, Lord of Grey, because we need to get back to New York ASAP. <laughs> yes. I didn't take her up on this offer. Wouldn't it be a greater night in the penthouse? Oh, we'd, we'd be. Fa- we, we I got- mean, you got to pay for it in your own way, but. <laughs> no, <laughs> she was so lovely. Yeah. And I. Yeah, un- until. Everyone should follow her. She's got a great little sweater uh, business. Short- <laughs> little. Don't say her name. <laughs> don't say little either. She no, but don't say her name. Now she's just going to get so many people going, can I stay? <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna get swamped. <laughs> hey, she can afford it. She's gonna buy the penthouse next door just for visitors. Oh. Yeah, no, she was such a beautiful lady. Oh, sweet Polish immigrant who made it made it big in New York City. Good on it. How, yeah. how did you meet her? Uh, I was going out with a, a Polish woman for a brief period of time. Of and, course, and uh, it was like her auntie, right? And, and 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 she 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 was she'd always sort of like try to intervene in the relationship Isn't it a little bit fucking weird for your ex that you're just hanging out with their auntie now? yeah well i don't speak to her anymore but yeah. like but but you still I, speak to her auntie <laughs> yeah that's strange <laughs> but she would take me aside and be like she is not good for you you deserve better <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a more mature experienced woman does she knit does she sew no she does not you've nailed it with polish but i think you can do better with age <laughs> So was this the first time you left the country since the pandemic, Nepal? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. First time. What was it like? Was it good? I can't wait to leave this. It country. is good. It's. Uh, it's the weirdest thing about it is noticing like the, the um, people's perception of Melbourne because in these mm. tea houses, it's sort of like a congregation of the United Nations there. Yeah. And as soon as you say, oh, "I'm from Australia," or oh, "We're in Australia," or oh, "Melbourne," they're like. Melbourne, I'm sorry to hear what you've been through. And Mm. it was kind of awkward, actually, (laughs) to be like, okay, you don't have to feel so sorry. But they're like, no, it's a lot. Like, and then you realize how, like, the the depth of the incompetence of like Mm. our whole government when they're like, so why was Melbourne the most locked down city in the world? And there's you like, yeah just idiots not being able to organize shit. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of like right wing propaganda is look at these dictators, and they're like, no, they. They're not organized enough to do that to us. Yes. They, like they literally were like, oh, "Oops, we didn't do anything." So you're going to be punished for our mistake. Yeah, people can't wrap their hand. Like it's much, it's much better to believe, much easier, and makes much more sense to believe that the people in charge are evil instead of just kind of stupid and winging it. Of course, <laughs> makes so much more sense. Were. Yeah, there's definitely guys in there that took like 17 years to get their politics <laughs> degree. Yeah, they're, like, they're training the vaccine rollout like your law degree. That's every job. Like, yeah. like <clears throat> when you go to the doctor, I bet sometimes they just say shit because they can't be like, I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah. you you ever look in someone's eyes as like professional and they're just like figuring it out? Yeah, yeah. It's like when people kind of come to our shows and and go like, oh, well, they, they must know what they're doing. Mm. Sometimes I'll just be like, I don't know. I was just having fun. You must know what you're doing. And I'll tell you something. I know what I'm wearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there is glimpses even when you see us live where we'll fumble or yeah. say a joke wrong or something like yeah. that. And maybe people realize maybe they don't, but it's it's every profession. And we're quite relatively new to what we Imagine though if you bought tickets to our show and then two years later we told our first joke. You'd be like, oh... <laughs> I'm a bit upset, actually. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, because that's what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It must be... An, you know what? I, I'm sick of seeing um, those things around Melbourne of, like, the local MPs just, like, mm. buying out billboards. Yeah. Like, the amount of Hitler mustaches I saw yeah. on the Liberal bloke as I came in today yeah. was just, like, next level. Yeah. Like, every... Like, I reckon I... There's about between the freeway Never and seen this here, much graffiti there's on like ten minutes of road. Yeah. I reckon I saw four vandalized mm. billboards of this one guy. Yeah, and I was like, dude, at what point are you just just give up? <laughs> I reckon like, what he should do. People aren't accepting you in this area. <laughs> yeah, move on. No, I think that that what he should do is um is just print them with swastikas on it. Save time, so and then the people, <laughs> then the people who hate him will will rub it out. I mean, like, well, it's a bit fucked, actually. Yeah, get rid of that. Uh, have you seen all these? Like, yeah, I've uh, seen them yeah. everywhere. But you must have seen all like the election things. Of course, of course, yeah. yes, I've seen heaps. I mean, I've I also like the seen, idea. Yes. I've also seen the the. I don't know if it's the guy you're talking about, but I've seen one of them. Like someone had drawn swastikas all over his thing, and he's like, "This is why you know we need to get rid of Nazism." And then all of the comments were like, "No, no, no, the, no, they're calling you the Nazi." This isn't pro-Nazi stuff. They're yeah. calling you. <laughs> He's trying to make, man, we need to get rid of Nazis. Like, you get sick of 
like in a Brunswick mm. 17 year old girls telling you to use your platform and tell people yeah. to enroll to vote. Yeah. Does like, that did that happen to you guys all a lot? I'm, DMs I'm not telling people to I was like, I vote. talk about my penis. My yeah. platform is built yeah. around comedy, around my ball sack. And you yeah. want me to tell people to vote? Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. Also, fucking... I go, I go there for a sausage and because I feel like I have to. <laughs> well, I do. you do have to. You do have to. Look, vote and vote in an informed way. Yeah. But I'm not going to fucking... It's not my job to teach people and tell people to enroll. You don't want it from me. I'm going to do it in a funny way and it's going to get misinterpreted and someone will vote for Clive Palmer because I thought it was funny. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do you like... Um, Which, by the way, that is quite funny. Have you ever used your platform in yeah. like a, to help... You know? I, I don't know. I feel bad if I say I haven't. I don't. But I didn't like have the same platform, and I don't. I certainly don't feel like uh, there's the sort of obligation. Unless I feel like, I mean, I just believe the things I believe in, and if I have an opinion about something, I'll articulate it. Yeah, I use. I think I've definitely used it, but it's for stuff that I genuinely care about. It's so weird when when other people go to you and be like, "I care about this thing," so and you true. have a platform, so you need yeah. to post about it. It's yeah. like, I look, I'm not going to post about something that I don't genuinely care about because yeah, exactly. then I'm not going to do it justice. That you're like, are you not thinking of it as like, how am I using this platform? Mm. But as long as the reason why you guys are having big followings and people want to listen to you is because you're just talking about what you believe in what you think is true and what matters to you mm. and that's how you're using your platform yeah and because if you used it in in a way to post about shit that you didn't genuinely care about it's lame it doesn't help the cause and it gets you in trouble because people work out that you're faking it yeah i used to do a joke about it about how like every person can only really care about one or two things max a year and one thing is usually like my dog got cancer or a personal thing, and then and then you might have some space for like the environment or uh, race issues or like one other thing, and then you can't really care about all these other horrible things. Yeah, I mean it's it's oh, it's like people have empathy exhaustion of yes. the last few yeah. years, and then just have to. I don't know. It's it's a very hard thing to do because you still have to take care of yourself mm. in in the like ocean of all these, you know things that are vying for your attention. And yeah. that's like the landscape we're navigating. It's the what about syndrome that every young person has. Because that you, is the worst thing. You when bring you up a about bad thing. Yeah. Like what or, about? Well, okay, so you post about this. What about the, sure. what's happening in Rwanda? Or what about yeah. Rwanda? Yeah. And you're like, I'm, you know, just because I post, just because yeah. I'll draw attention to one negative thing, it doesn't mean that's the only negative thing yeah. in yeah. the world, but everyone just cares about their own thing. That's why I just like go, not getting involved in any of it. What I, what I do is is when I post about a cause, I posted recently about a, a kid who had cancer and I put, put in the caption, yes, this means I hope all of the other children die of their diseases. I only care about this one kid. Yeah. Yeah. And that's responsible. <laughs> yeah. It's, respon it's a responsible use of that, yeah. this platform that mm. you have. Yeah. yeah. I just, you just got to get ahead of it. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so what else has been going on with you? I'm just kidding. I've never posted about uh, a kid with cancer. What else has been going on with me? Uh... Nepal. You yeah, what is what is next for you? You're going to do these shows, which, by the way, go see Joe. Very good. Thank you, thank you. Um, then finish this semester. Just get through it. I've How long will that take? A few more years? I oh, mean, I've got this intellectual property assignment I still got to do. It was due last week. And <laughs> I think I might get around to it. Did in I say this on air or off air? My mum needs an open heart surgery. And so I. Oh, so you're saying that my mum's surgery doesn't matter? <laughs> Does your mum have it? No, <laughs> but I, I was obviously I wasn't happy that my mum's having open heart surgery, but it did give me a, a legitimate reason to get an extension on this assignment. He tried to use comedy festival as a reason. Didn't they didn't accept it? Yeah. And then he went, "Well, <laughs> why heart. wasn't mum's open heart surgery number one? It, it became number one when <laughs> it became number one very quickly. That worked." Yeah, yeah, that that worked. It, got, mm. it gave me some compassionate leave. Yeah, people That's don't good. have too much compassion for an artist trying well, to write a show about jokes. Nepal. They don't, because no. they're like, mate, why would you go to Nepal during the semester? Mid semester. That's a, yeah. such a good question. You're an idiot. Yeah, and you know that that may be true, mm. and probably is. But I love it when like past guests come on, like, "What's next for you?" They're like, "Oh, I've got this project coming up." You know, two hour. 
Mm. You're like, man, if I could just get through this law degree <laughs> in the next two decades, yeah. that is going to be just like a win. Because then I can finally, finally not become a lawyer. <laughs> I know that's devastating as well. Would you think about that? <laughs> no, no, you're not doing it for that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Finish it. I think it you should you finish s- it. Yeah, I got to finish it. I'm, mm. I'm sort of, yeah, I don't know, mate. Who knows what the hell I'm doing? Yeah, I, 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 my, my housemate's girlfriend was saying she was trying to give me a, a speech on like uh because i'd been i was going through a breakup yeah and she took me aside and i still haven't joined the dots on this she's like you know i've seen your dating profile before i'm like okay she's like can can i just let you know that like women are attracted to guys who know who they are mm. <laughs> wow <laughs> And, wow. and and I was like, oh, I don't have any idea who I am. She's like, yeah. And I was like, and then she just left. I'm like. Yeah, I would book a flight to Nepal. And that's that. when I booked the flight to Nepal, which was a surprise to me. And then every single person <laughs> I told was not surprised in the slightest. When you, I, I told you earlier, I'm like. <laughs> It was shocking me for seven years that you weren't in the Himalayas. <laughs> that was, like, was the other thing here? I was surprised about was that it was your first trip, you know, like your first trip there. Yeah. No, well, I, I mean, I'm sure I'll go back now that I've been there. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, man, it's great. The, 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 Sher- the Sherpas are so sweet mm. and, and they, they want you to, they really make a big thing about uh, if you stay with them, that like really celebrating you and by like putting scarves over you and, and blessing you and, and you feel that 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 blessing and that mm. love. Do you think they are happier than people here? Uh, I, yeah, I'd say they've figured a few other things out. Yeah, but but that's just because it's a, a simpler way of existing. Mm. And I mean, they being, haven't even seen the Matrix. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. They've never once thought, "Is this mountain real?" Yeah, you know, it's it funny. just is. Like, but a simple way of existing is only seeing John Wick. Yeah. Like yes, like, yes, yeah, yeah, that's true, huh? Mm. It's a simple way of being. Yeah. yeah. Once uh, they go, gee, this Keanu act is good. I wonder what else he's in. That whole place is fucked. Yeah. You're going to go back. The, They'll be wearing yeah, trench hey, mate, coats. TikTok is taking over. In Nepal. I saw you found a TikTok dance troupe. Yeah, yeah I joined for wow. a short time a troupe in, uh, in Nepal that were like big on TikTok. They had maybe 5,000 to 10,000 followers. But that's huge. And uh, TikTok is pretty big in Nepal. And w- one day I was trying to get somewhere uh, from a town called Basisahar, but it was like a four-hour walk away. Mm. And um, there, were no, there was no buses. And there were these kids. They had their parents' car. And they, they drove me with some French people. Mm. And they were like, we do dances, so we can drive you, but you have to do these dances with us. And so... For TikTok. For TikTok. That's sick. And so... That was their currency. Like that the attention economy has made it to Nepal. Join us in group dance or we will not drive you. Yeah. And you were like, dumb dance. I was like, I can't And I would have walked. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, so what was the best thing then that happened? Uh, favorite moment of the journey. Favorite... Favorite moment of the journey. We can, we can end on this. What's oh your favorite God. moment? It was, it was, it was, it was probably the, 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 the monk that I met that I became like the closest friends with. And, uh, I was always so happy to, to see him. And we, we had some very good chats. He, he like literally was helping me on my show. I don't know if you guys heard this part, yeah. but he was literally like, do you even need to write the show? I'm like, wow, that's profound. And then I was like, yeah, maybe I don't need to write it. And he's like, he going, because remember when you wrote a show before you left? No, he's like, you? no, you do need to write it. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely need to write it. And then the last, the very last time I, I saw him, um, he was on his motorbike and he was uh, about to go somewhere. And I was like, Shawa, Shawa. And he came up to me and he took off his mask and he's like, why do I make you so horny? <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, I went to answer him and I was like, uh, and he's like, don't answer that. <laughs> Just something to think about. <laughs> and then you drove away. And I People d- in your life keep just telling you things about yourself, <laughs> not giving you any 
time to process it than leaving your life. Super yeah. monk like. Yeah. So I I asked I told my sister that story. She's like, why 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 did he make you so horny? You had a lot of time to think about it. I was like, I I, I still don't know. I just he there's something about him that turned me on. Just the the luminosity of this beautiful guy. Uh, he he did do one very kind thing for me. I thought it was kind at the time. My Irish friend, he had AirPods that were 2,000 rupees, which is about $20. <coughs> yeah. And he's like, brother, these, rupee, the, these are so good, these AirPods, $20 back home. Go and get them. And so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go. And uh, I, Virgil left. The next day, I'm like, I'm going to get some AirPods. And Shawang was like, mate, don't get the cheap ones. Do not get the cheap ones. You, your friend's getting these fake things. They're no good. Come with me. I'll get you the real deal. <laughs> and... Uh, so he took me to a place. I, sp I spent 22,000 rupees and he took me to his guy. And so I spent about 220 yeah. Australian dollars. And I was talking to Fergal the other day. <laughs> he's in India now and his AirPods are working perfect. Yeah. And mine are not. <laughs> right. So his brother ran that store. <laughs> pretty, even the monks uh, having it over you. But I, I have to <laughs> hope they did it on good faith. Mm. You can hope that. But maybe We not. can all hope that. Yeah. And anyway. I think that's what we'll end the episode on oh Joseph God. getting ripped off by a monk on a mountain. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, mate. Go yeah. see Joseph's show. Follow him on Instagram and all his other social media. He's uh, one, one fifth of a dance troupe in Nepal as well. Thank I'm you. Here. Thank you, fellas. And make sure you use that platform responsibly, mate. I mm. will appreciate it. Cool. I'll give you a list of causes that I care about and now they're your problem. Thank you. Thanks uh, for listening. Adios, everyone. Bye. Bye.